This is Tyrese Halliburton, and you're listening to Setting the Pace. gentlemen of setting the pace we now welcome on the pride of bowling green kentucky inch for inch the most underrated rebounder in the nba he is our very own indiana pacer terry taylor terry what's going on appreciate you having me uh it's going good just sitting in the lobby of my apartment complex right now so hey not bad at all but terry let's i figured we'd start from the beginning look terry you dominated high school all right we're talking all state three times, MVP, state title, yet still under recruited. You go to Austin PA, you dominate for four years, twice winning Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year, yet still go undrafted in the NBA. How enormous is this chip on your shoulder to prove everybody wrong once again? Oh uh, man, the chip the chip's never gonna leave. It's always gonna be there, it's always gonna be huge. Uh, because there's always gonna be like questions or doubts about me like my size and what position I play if I can do this or I can do that and you know I'm always I'm always every day looking out to prove myself uh regardless if I have proven myself even in the slightest bit to anybody like I, I feel like I still got a whole whole more a uh, lot more to show everybody well I'm, so, I'm curious well I'm curious because you know everybody always talks about well you're only six foot five six foot six whatever <laughs> You know, what position are you? I don't really care what position you are, but when people ask you that question, what do you respond with? Uh, I'm a basketball player. Like, that's that's the only thing I can really tell anybody. Like, I go out and I make basketball plays for my for my team no matter what. So you can put me in any position. Like, I'm still going to rebound. I'm still going to defend. I'm still going to make some contributions on the offensive end. So, like, at the end of the day, it don't matter what, where you put me. Like, I'm going to make some type of impact. I love it, but it's no matter what site you look at, it depends. Maybe it's a different day of the week. They got you as a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward. It's everything. So it's like you're the only one that can clear that up for us. But in a positionless era, hey, if you're going to play three positions or so, we'll take that every day. But I mentioned it before, and I know that, you know, you, you walk the walk, but I want to hear you talk the talk a little bit. Call me crazy, but I said – you know, at six foot five, inch for inch, I do think you are the best rebounder in the NBA. Is there anyone even close at six five or so that can bring what you're bringing to the table rebounding wise? Because I want to put it in perspective. Per 36 minutes, 4.8 offensive rebounds per game. Terry, I don't know if you're aware of that. That's ahead of Giannis. That's ahead of Rudy Gobert. I, uh, you know, Nikola Jokic. We're talking about all stars and MVPs here. Oh. Uh. Honestly, no. I honestly don't feel like there's no one at my size that can do what I do. Like, I honestly feel like I'm one of one when it comes to offensive rebounding and just rebounding in general, just because I know how to use my size um, and my strength, and I just got great instincts for where the ball is going to be. So I really don't think there's anybody in the NBA that's they can rebound just like me. Like, even going back to college, like. I still rebounded at a high level. I think I averaged like around four offense rebounds a game still in college and playing heavy minutes and still being the focal point. Like I still did it at a high level. So I, I, don't, I don't see nobody Love it. in my size. Well, I, I noticed you're, you're changing your jersey number from 32 to 21 this year. And uh, there's a former player in the Pacer Nation that wore number 21, and that is Thad Young. And I've heard, you know, some people believe that you guys have a similar game in terms of, you know, not known for your offensive presence on the perimeter right now, but 
you know, just that scrappiness, that ability to play down low and guard, you know, multiple positions. I mean, do you do you compare yourself at all to that, or is there another player out there that you think you could match up wise in terms of like skill wise, someone you look at that you kind of resemble their their playing style? Um, no, not really. I mean, you know, Thad's a great player. You know, he's made a great career for himself. But for the most part, like, I don't really try to, like, imitate nobody. Like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, I'm my own person. So, like, what I do is different than what Thad may do. Like, and – or who who else I've got comparisons? Uh, Jay Sean Tate. Like, I just feel like my game is different than theirs – in a, in a completely different way, like rebounding wise, like I feel like it's di- way different. Uh, matching up defensively, I feel like it's different. Even like shoot from the perimeter, like I, or just being able to make certain plays offensively, I feel like our games are still completely different. Like I honestly feel like I'm just my own unique player, and that's what I like about myself. Well, Terry, like, you, you talked can't... about being a one of one, and I'm gonna mention a stat that basically puts you in your own class. I'm sure you're aware of it, but you know, this is a real stat. This was tweeted out last year. You made 100 of your first 155 attempts from the field. That field goal percentage at 64 and a half percent. That was the second best since the NBA merger behind only Mitchell Robinson, who has eight inches on you and, and pretty, you know, basically, and pretty much stays in the paint. So Terry, are we only scratching the surface here on your potential? Uh, yeah, I feel like I got a lot more to show. And, you know, that comes with time and more development and, you know, more trust from my teammates and my coaching staff. So I just feel like I got a lot more to offer that is going to take some time. But, you know, when that day comes, like, I feel like everybody will know, like, hey, there's more to this kid than we uh, than we knew about. So, but I feel like only only Cam knows. Uh, only my, Shout out to Cam, though. Only my closest friends from back at home know, my trainers know. So it's just it's just going to take some time and a lot more development and trust. I'm curious to know a little bit more about your experience getting to the league, obviously. Uh, the Pacers had an eye on you, apparently, for Summer League and the G League and that kind of thing. And so uh, you, you played great in the G League at the call up to the NBA. But I'm curious, when did you first know the Pacers had an interest in bringing you on um, their G League roster? Uh, I'd say it was right after the draft. Okay. You know, I, I watched the whole thing and, you know, even like, even Cam and them was telling me like, yo, like you're not going to get drafted, like, or there's a possibility you could, but you know how the draft goes, like certain people get picked before when they were projected or someone comes available that they shouldn't have been there. So, you know, a lot of things got to go in place, but, um, Towards like the second round, he was like, "Hey, like, just want to let you know, like, it might not happen, but it'd be by your phone for the conclusion." I was like, "Okay, that's fine." Like, and that's the one thing I respect about Cam and them. Like, they they kept they was honest with me the whole time. Like, even during the pre draft process, even when I had like high hopes that like, "Yo, like, I think I can get drafted." Like, they were like, "Hey, like, don't be don't be shocked if it doesn't happen." Like, you know, because I didn't get invited to none of the league camps or nothing like that. So. <clears throat> And there wasn't Portsmouth, so, you know, that kind of hurt at the end. That kind of hurt in the beginning. But, um, yeah, uh, he, him and BJ called me, and they were like, yeah, the Pacers, I think the Heat, and maybe the Pelicans or somebody, some, somewhere in the Western Conference, I can't really remember. But they were all trying to give me, like, an E-10 deal. Uh, and he thought – and they thought uh, the Pacers made sense just – and they brought up players like um, Mitru Long, um, O'Shea, um, who else? Um, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, Alizé Johnson. They brought up players like that, and they was like, they got a really good development system. And, you know, I just think – they was like, I think that's the perfect opportunity for you to go and, like, get a two-way or even a standard deal. So – I was like, all right, bet. Like, let's throw away Indiana. Like, I didn't second guess it or nothing like that. I trusted what they said, and you know, I rolled with it. Um, so, going in the summer league, we're going to summer league. I had a pretty good summer league, um, and you know, I didn't play the first two games, and you know, that's okay. Like, I, I was still being a great teammate and whatnot. 
And I think it was my first game. I really showed a glimpse of like how I could impact the game just because I think I had five offensive rebounds in like 14 minutes or something like that. Crazy. And, you know, it just continuously like kept going and, uh, Coach Coach Tom, who's the head coach for the G League, like he was really keeping an eye on me and really working with me. And um, obviously, I go into training camp, go into preseason, and the whole nine with the faces. And then after the Cleveland game, I get cut, and um, I didn't clear. I didn't. I uh, cleared the waivers or whatever. No other NBA team picked me up, so I signed with the G League team, and that was the. That's where it all got started from. I love it. I mean, you talk about, you know, you didn't get that that draft night feeling that everyone, you know, thinks about and everything. But when you go over to the G League, I mean, you dominated right over there with the, with the Mad Ants. It was evident. And then you end up playing, I think it was like roughly about 23 games with the Pacers. But Terry, I'm going to be honest, it took about a week or so to, to be like, this guy needs more minutes and we want him here long term. What was the feeling like when the Pacers converted your two-way contract into a standard agreement? Yo, that was probably the best feeling like I had. Um, I really didn't. I really, it really didn't settle set in with me until I, till probably my second week back at home. That like I was like, wow, like I really like went through the grind. Like I went through summer league and I didn't play the first couple of games. I went preseason, only played like ten total minutes. And then, like, I had an all right, like, scrimmage in my first G League game. And, like, I even went to Cam and I was like, yo, like, I don't think I'm going to play. Like, I don't think I'm going to start. Like, I don't think I'm going to do none of this. So, I, you know, and then, you know, I go to the G League and I, I put up crazy numbers. And then, like, even when I got the two-way, like, I still wasn't playing. So, like, I was going to practice and still working out and whatnot and not knowing when I was going to get my shot. And then, you know, Coach Carlisle puts me in at OKC, and I, I like, helped spark a comeback uh, win in OKC. And I think that was, like, the tipping point to where he's like, hey, I can, like, trust this kid and, like, he can give us valuable minutes and be a valuable piece for us. So, you know, just knowing that Chad and all them, like, believed in me that much to, like, give me a contract, it really meant the world to me. And, like, it just – it's only going to go up from here. Like, I got, I still got so much more to prove on, like, why they gave me a contract and, like, later down the road why I deserve another one. So, you know, it was a great feeling, and I'm thankful for it every day. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to say as a fan watching you, I uh, was not sure what to expect. Obviously, I wasn't super familiar with your game. I, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, I heard a lot about That's your okay. – I heard a lot about your, your rebounding – and how you were great at that. But I was like, I want to see what he looks like in the NBA, obviously. I mean, it's one thing to do it in college. It's another thing to do it in the pros. And I think the game that stood out for me was probably, unfortunately, when Isaiah Jackson got hurt in that first quarter against the Magic after he had just had a really big game against the Clippers. I'm like, okay, that stinks for him. And then you got that opportunity. And I thought, man, okay, Terry Taylor came to play. I was like, this kid's got something special. I'm like, I really believe in him. Is that one of the games where you felt like this is like – I can do this. This is like my welcome to the NBA moment. Like I, I know I can play in this league. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was actually, I was actually nervous. I was nervous as shit whenever I got in that game because I seen, I seen Isaiah go down. Like I wasn't expecting to get in that early, yeah. and he's and he goes down. I'm just like, oh, I was like, I was not. I was just like, my hands started sweating. I was just like, man, well. I guess it's time because I heard all my team is like, yep, TT, get ready to go. And I'm just like, already? It's only been like 30 seconds. I was like, I ain't even – I just put my gum in, got to chewing. Like, I just sat down. Like, I'm just – I'm sitting, I'm really sitting here thinking all these things. And I was just like, hey, man, now or never, it's time to go. So, I got in and, you know, at that point, like, I'm playing with house money. Like, I can't – there's nothing, like, I can do wrong at this point. Like – I'm going to get the chance to play no matter what. So I just got to go out there and play my game and just play normal. And I think I did that pretty well. But, like, that was really my welcome to the, like, NBA moment for me. Like, because I really showed the fans and I showed all my teammates, like, I can come out here and play any 
you put me anywhere, and I feel like I'll rebound with the best, the best and biggest of them, and I'll just I'll play my heart out for it for y'all every night. So that's just how it was. I mean, Terry, the way you were rebound out, rebounding out there, you made me believe that I could rebound. I ain't <laughs> so I'm telling you, your your play has been inspiring. But one thing that was also inspiring is. Terry, I'm going to be honest. I've seen flashes of that three ball. Now, the people don't forget against Detroit, you turned from Terry Taylor into Terry Curry, and you went three for three from three. So how is that three ball looking these days? Because, you know, in this era where they're launching a lot of threes, if you can get that down pat, the sky is the limit for you. Uh, it's, it's actually been better. You know, I've been – that's been the main thing I've been working on because I know there's going to be plenty of times, like, I'm going to get opportunities to catch and shoot, especially with Tyrese and Isaiah running the pick and roll and even with Goga, Miles, like, and then you got Buddy and all them around. Like, it's going to – my man's going to sink in every time because, you know, teams don't believe that I can shoot it. But, you know, I think last year was more of nerves sometimes whenever it was called because I feel like I really need to hit this. But now, like, this coming year, like, I don't feel like it's going to be like that. Like, I know – if I catch it, like, I'm going to knock it down. I believe I'm going to knock it down every time. So, I think I think it's, like you said, the sky's the limit. Like, knock down two or three of them, and, you know, it opens up so much more for me and my teammates. And, you know, that's the goal. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's one of those things where you almost have to have a three-point shot to, to keep yourself in the league. I mean, I think Draymond's probably the only one that doesn't really have a consistent one at this point in his career. But – I am curious a little bit, though, in terms of being in the year or being in the an NBA last year, you know, you've got that experience. I'm curious, what goals have you set for yourself this upcoming season that you want to achieve uh, this year? Um, goals that I want to uh, achieve. Um, you know, I want to be like a constant piece in the rotation, you know, be part of like helping the team win and like growing and developing with all the guys for, like, the long term, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I want to make the Rising Stars game. Like, I want to be a part of that, like, for my second year. Uh, and just continue to develop and just, you know, showcase that, like, I'm getting better with my craft and, you know, I'm just – there's there's going to be more layers to me outside just rebounding and being, like, versatile defensively. But – you know, it all comes with time. So, but those are like some goals for me. Just be in the rotation, be a great teammate, and make the Rise of the Stars game. I love it. And, you know, that stage I think is going to be awesome because, you know, and once again, shout out to Cam. You know, Cam sent me this article. Uh, basically, Bleacher Report put it out the NBA's best kept secrets. And for the Pacers, you were the player that they highlighted on. And I feel like while it's great to be you know, in that category, we want you to be a household name this year. And if you can make the Rising Stars game, I think then you can get, you know, more of the NBA casuals being like this Terry Taylor guy, he's got something there. And that kind of takes us into this offseason. Last offseason, big one. This one, borderline even bigger. What have been the things that you've been prioritizing most this offseason? Uh, probably being more explosive and quicker laterally. Because, like, I want to be able to, like, switch one through five, be able to, like, really impact the game defensively, like, kind of how Draymond does, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really watch a lot of, like, Draymond clips and, you know, even, like, Chu, uh, our analytics guy that um, is with Rick a lot, uh, he's pulled up some clips. And even Lloyd's pulled up some clips. And, like, you know, at some point, like, in my career, like, I want to get to that point, like, where I can cover a lot of holes for our defense if there is any, or I can just be that anchor and be able to, you know, if we need to go small, like, I can fill that I can fill that void or, you know, even if we go big, like, I can still hold my own on the perimeter. So um, that's something I've been trying to work on. Obviously, the shooting, because it's a shooting league. Like, you got to be able to shoot to stay on the court for the most part. And just making the right decisions like on closeouts or just in general and trying to slow it down or pick when to slow down or speed up and whatnot. 
so it's been a it's been a good off season though. Like I've enjoyed myself, been going to different places, training and learning. So it's all it's all been great for me. Yeah, I mean, you bring up Draymond. I mean, I think he's obviously a really great player. So I'm curious uh, if you're trying to model your game after him on the defensive side. Is there any way that you could model yourself after him offensively? Are you that type of a playmaker, or do you see yourself as a different type of player offensively? Uh, I feel like I could be that playmaker, like that type. You know, it just comes with you know playing more and learning from everybody and asking questions, but like. I feel like in due time, like I can't be that type of playmaker, but I feel like I could be more at the end of the day. Like I'm always gonna I'm always gonna think I can be more than what other people put me in. Like I'm never gonna just be like, hey, like I'll settle for this. Like I'm never gonna be that person. Like I'm always gonna wanna be better and prove to myself. Like that's the whole that's the whole reason I play. Like I play to prove that I'm one of the best to play. Like I don't play just for to say, hey, I'm in the NBA or hey, they pay me this to play like, nah, I play because I love to play and I want to prove why why I'm here and I like to win. So that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You know, first of all, sorry, those Draymond comparisons, they got me ready to run through a wall right now. All right, Pacer Nation is going to be thinking the same thing. So <laughs> love that comparison over there. But also – we got a nice young core over here that fans are beyond excited about with the potential for everybody to be able to grow together. Now, look, we're not expecting a championship this year by any means, but what can we expect from this team coming together on a night in night out basis? Um, you know, our, our emphasis, I feel like it's going to be more on the defensive end this year. You know, I just feel like if we come together on that end, like it'll really like help, help us out like because it there was times like last year like defense was really a problem for us you know not trusting the system or like just not having that chemistry with each other but like us all being so young and we're going to have time to hopefully build and um make make strides together so like you know it's going to be an exciting year we got a lot of athletes like we got benedict we got isaiah we drafted kendall uh, obviously, we know Tyrese. We got um, Jalen. We got TJ coming back. We got Andrew Nimhard. We got O'Shea. Y'all know how O'Shea is, especially on fast breaks. Like it's gonna be an exciting year. Um, there's gonna be a lot of good flashes, and there's gonna be some bumps in the road. But like, it's gonna be all good for the for the long for the long haul. Because I just feel like the guys that we're putting around and the guys that we will add, like. It's just going to get even better here in Indy in the next couple of years. So, um, but for the most part, yeah, I, I just think defense is what's really going to get us. Like, because we know we know what we can do offensively. Like, we we can put the ball in the hole offensively, just as good as anybody. But like, defense is where we got like strap up and really like get the job done. So. Yeah, I definitely think this team over the last couple of years has taken a step back defensively ever since the departure of Dan Burke, who was a huge part of the Pacers' successful teams in the early 2000s, even the late 90s, and even the uh, 2010s when they made that Eastern Conference Finals run against the Heat. You know, Dan Burke was there for Mm -hmm. all of that. So, you know, it's just interesting to kind of see how the team has moved forward without him and and the defense has slack. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that goes. But one thing I thought was really interesting, obviously, last year, there was a lot of trades that happened in the middle of the season. You guys had to be there for that. It was all during the COVID outbreak, you know, all these trades, guys in and out of the roster. Um, but then they bring in Tristan Thompson, and we know that people called him TT as well as you. So tell, talk to me about that, like, week of having Tristan Thompson on there. You both guy, both of you guys having the same nickname, and what kind of uh, what kind of uh, experience that was like? Oh, uh, that was a – it was a good experience. Like, you know, he's a professional. Like, he's been on championship teams. Like, he knows to come in and work and whatnot. And, you know, he gets, he gets good advice during the games about, like, what to do. Uh, but, yeah, like, Buddy and uh, Tyrese be in the locker room and, like, we'll all be sitting in the locker room and they'll, they'll be like, oh, TT. And I'm, I'll am i look over and they'll be like, no, 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 not you, not you. Uh, Tristan, we forgot – He's also TT from uh, Sacramento. I'm just like, oh, okay. So um, 
I'm literally just like, it's every time, like even in practice or in the weight room, like someone say TT and I'm just like, like we got to come to like some understanding here, like of who you, who we're talking to. Like, and you know, I just felt like I was like, yo, I was here first. So like, I feel like I should get to like the reins of like that being my nickname here. <laughs> um, so uh, they were just like, they try to like say, oh, well, big TT and then little TT. I was like, no, nah, like can't do that either. Like, how about we just call him Tristan? And we can call him me TT, but you know, it was all good. Like, <laughs> you know, he was a good – he was a great teammate while he was here um, and, you know, very knowledgeable about the game. So, First of all, oh it, it became evident real quick. This town was only big enough for one TT, all right? There wasn't going to be a big TT and a little TT. That, that's way worse than – Only one. Only one. Only, only one. Only one. Remain. So, look, I'm happy that you won that that battle. But, no, in, in all seriousness, look, <laughs> after when that trade happens, it felt like there was two different Pacer teams. You got – Pre Halliburton and you got post Halliburton. What was the vibe like afterwards when you got you know Tyrese coming through? You got you know there's a couple of different other Buddy Healed. What was the vibe like? You know, post trade deadline. Oh, uh, I think it was just it was more exciting. You know, it was more lively because uh, Tyrese he's got such a big personality. Like even him and like even Buddy too, and you mesh it with Dwayne. And the rest of the team and like everybody starts to feed off of it and like everybody starts to like, you know, start being more energetic and whatnot, you know, especially when Tyrese came, like the ball moved around. He's like he's not afraid to pass the ball up or anything like that. I'm not saying like the guys before didn't pass the ball up, but like it was just the the game was more faster in that aspect. Like he just he pushed the pace, you know, he was always trying to like get a basket quick if they scored or even if they didn't score, like he's really trying to push the pace. And I like that about Tyrese. Um, and like, he's a good leader too. Like he's always going to tell you what he sees and like what he wants you to do and whatnot. And, you know, being so young, like, I mean, we're all young. We're all like 20, 22 and up, like 25 and younger outside of obviously TJ miles and, um, uh, buddy, but for the most part, um, so it was, it was, it was a fun, it was a fun time, and it's even gonna get, it's gonna get even better because Tyrese is getting better. Like, I honestly, think Tyrese is an all star. Like, in the coming years, like that's how good Tyrese is. But, um, just, and then on top of that, like, especially when we get everybody healthy and fully on board, like, then I think it'll be even better. Like we was doing this with a lot of people in and out of the lineups and having to call upon a lot of people that, you know, ain't played that many NBA minutes or had that much experience with Tyrese and them. Yeah, that's that's definitely it. It was like 30-some players, I think, on the roster last year at one point. So, I mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen something like that before. Um, so, I got a two-part question for you here. My first part is, uh, what player one on one matchup wise do you think that you got the better of in a game last year? I'm just curious. Like, you thought, oh, I, I just dominated this guy in this game. I did really good. And then on the flip side, who's one player that was like incredibly hard to guard? And you're like, okay, this is this is a tough matchup. Um, person, I feel like I got the best of. One on one, I felt like when we played the Magic, when I had my breakout game. Like, they're bigs. I feel like I had – I got the – I feel like that was my day. Like, I feel like I had them that day. And then probably when we played Trey Young, I think it was the second. I can't remember which one. He had, like, 30-something at the half, and, like, I kept getting switched on to him. I think that was one. And then also Vucevic. Vucevic was, like um, – I was getting – he was giving me any bucket possible, and, like, Miles is over trying to tell me like how to guard him and like whatnot. I'm like, dog, like I don't I don't know what you want me to do right now. Like he's he's got like seventeen and ten right now and it's not even the second it's not even the second half. Like I'm out here I'm out here on the island with him. But it got better in the second half. But I think those two for me, uh for sure. For me personally. They're like I've seen the bulk of the matchup, so 
what I'm hearing over here is the Terry Taylor revenge tour. We're circling the Chicago Bulls on there. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to get some TT. So, uh, but one guy that I feel like we're not talking enough about, and I feel like injuries happen in that. You got to play with them the regular season. You got to play with them a game in summer league. Chris Duarte, tell me a little mm-hmm. bit about, you know, how you – how you like Duarte's game, what he's bringing to the table, because he had an excellent rookie year, but maybe due to some injuries here and there, I just feel like people aren't talking about him enough. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Chris was ha- Chris was on pace. Uh, he was on pace to have, like, probably be in the running for rookie of the year if, like, he would have just – if he had kept going and not get hurt. But Chris is another special one. Like, his pace and the way he plays is – you know, it's amazing. Like, I've never seen someone come in, be a rookie, and, like, play. Like, even before I played and, like, I just watch on TV, like, you can just tell, like, his pace and the way he played the game was just different than others. Um, his shot creating is phenomenal. I feel like he can get a shot off at any point. Uh, you know, as the season went on, his playmaking got a lot better, too. And it's even getting even got better, like, when we was uh, practicing for Summer League and we played in Summer League, like, I think that was his whole focus because they know he can score. Like everybody knows he can score, score, score the best of them. I feel like, but at the same time, like his playmaking, I feel like he's gonna open it up for him more. And obviously, if we get shots from the outside, like it'll open it up more for him. But yeah, people people need to stay on the Chris Duarte train because he's very talented, um, you know, and he's only getting better too. Like the rest of us, like he's going into year two, like me. He's going in the year two like me and Isaiah, so um, it's just it's just a matter of time for uh, he really blows up. Okay, I gotta ask because we all know that, that Lance Stevenson is just you know <laughs> crazy. But I'm curious, uh, do you got a good Lance story for us? Do I got a good Lance story? Um, uh, probably not PG wise, but. <laughs> I ain't, I'm gonna have to hold off on that one, but Lance is a wild one. Lance is a wild man, like, and I enjoy being around Lance too. Like, he know he he kept me afloat this past year too, helping me out and uh, you know giving me advice on how to get out the screens quicker, where he wants me at uh, when he drops the ball, he wants me to cut back door, or stay in the corner. So he was really helpful too, and you know it was great seeing him like be off for two years or like a year and a half or however long it was and then just come back and show the NBA that like he could still play. So I thought that was just dope to see. Uh especially the the Nets game. That was probably the most that was that was the craziest thing I've ever saw in my life. Like with my own eyes. Like twenty points off the off the bench in the first quarter. Don't miss the shot. And you hit the buzzer beater with the shimmy like that was just that was that was unreal. It was like it was like really watching a video game at that point. Yeah, it's like you had to start working on your air guitar skills faster than you thought, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> big, big, big time, big facts, big facts. Truly, Superman yeah. putting back his cape back on coming to Indiana. I mean, really, it was just so Lance like. We had him on a couple months ago. Story time with Lance is a great time. I mean, he had a couple good ones for us. But uh, as we transition over to a little rapid fire, it's going to be the first thing that comes to mind. Speaking of Lance, it took him, you know, about five minutes per response. We want to, you know, keep it quick on this first thought. Favorite game from last year's NBA season for you? My favorite game from last season? Uh, probably the Wizards game. I really liked that game. Um, it was just a good back and forth affair. Uh, we came out with the W at the end, but – and. I mean, I, I dunked on Kuzma, so that was probably my favorite moment, too. So, because uh, I got a text from back home, and everybody's just like, yo, like, you dunked on Kuzma. And my little brother called me. He was like, in typical fashion, he was like, you're not even like that. Like, <laughs> That's great. He's like, you're not even like that. So, and it, it shouldn't even count. The ball came out, and I was like, of course, you're you're going to sit here and hate on me right now. Classic brother hating right there. I got an older brother. We go back and forth like that, too. Yeah. But that's that's my guy. That's my that's my biggest supporter, but my biggest critic too. I love it. Oh, that's that's great, man. You know, Fachi knows a lot about the Wizards, so it's good to see them go down. But uh, my question for you is, who is your favorite player growing up? Favorite player, LeBron. 
All right. What wow. shoes do you like to wear on game days? Uh, right, right now I've been wearing the Giannis Zoom Freaks. I think it's um, – is it three? I think it's three. I can't remember which ones, but, like, feels like nothing's on my feet. The most comfortable shoe I got. It was the low Kyrie's. I think it was, like, Kyrie 4s, and they were lows. But they tore up from the G League. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I had to switch to Giannis, and – I got like four pairs of them in my locker right now, so it's probably my favorite shoe to play in right now. All right. So, what what teammate do you have the closest relationship with? Oh, uh, it was probably all my rookie teammates, to be honest. It was Isaiah and uh, Dwayne more than anything, because I mean we would all ride together to the airport, and D- me and Dwayne would sit by each other on the plane. So, you know, we all we all got kind of close. Uh, but this summer, me and Chris have talked more, and we've hung out more. Like, we went to Top Golf, and I got absolutely obliterated by Chris, but <laughs> it's fine. Um, but, yeah, I'd probably say the, my rookie teammates more than anything. Now, this one could be a little bit tough. Best shooter on the Pacers, one shot. Who are you putting your money on? Tyrese. Ooh, okay, okay. Tyrese. Right, I wasn't sure going to go buddy there. It couldn't nah, even say Chris. I mean, we got some shooters on this team. We do, but hey, man, I've seen Tyrese. Like we play shooting games, and he's put us on his back before, and it's been crazy. So, I like Tyrese in the shooting game. But he, but he's definitely like right there. It's not like it's like right there. It's not it's not like a big discrepancy between neither one of them. Well, we won't. I mean, have- you can't, we won't tell them you said that. We'll just keep it on here. If they listen, then that's up to you to defend yourself. <laughs> that's fine. That's uh, fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, what's your favorite sport outside of basketball? Football. You got a I team you roll with? I like the Chiefs. Oh, okay. Be- before Pat Mahomes got there, I like watching them when they had Alex Smith, Jamal Charles, and Dwayne Bowen, and all them. And even when Justin Houston was on the defense and Eric Berry, I really like watching them play. So, um, yeah, I'm a big football fan. I love yeah. watching football. I'm a Denver Broncos fan. So, Terry, I'm going to let it slide, oh, but I'm sorry, telling you, much. you're going down this year finally that we got Russell Wilson. But, oh, okay. you know, outside of TT, what's another nickname for you if you have one? Uh, so, back at home, uh, I got my most, most of my, my friends and former teammates I play with, they call me Zebo back at home. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I got that nickname my freshman year of high school because, like, they they all said I played like Zach Randolph when I was in high school. Barely jumped in high school, so <laughs> I was really I was really having to score buckets, like using angles and using my body really well. So they called me Zebo. Zebo was a good one. Right. It just stuck. It just stuck with him. Well, he was an Indiana guy too, so that definitely just you know ties it all together for you there. Uh, I love yeah. it. Uh, who is your favorite superhero? My favorite Batman. Okay. Probably. You like the new one? Uh, uh I I haven't watched it. What? I haven't watched I it's haven't watched like it. three hours, so I've been, it's ready. That's that's what O'Shea told me. O'Shea was like it's like three hours. I was like, dog, like I'm not trying to sit there and watch <laughs> I'm not trying to sit in the movie for three hours. Like it's I ain't gonna lie to it was worth it. It it's it good. was good. I don't I like think it's better than The Dark Knight. I don't think no, it's that's because the bar they're, on that is just so high. I mean, The yeah, Dark Knight's like a masterpiece, you know? Yeah, there's no way they're beating The Dark Knight. Like, that's a classic. Like, I could watch The Dark Knight every day and not get tired of it. <laughs> yeah, I think every other Batman movie after that, is, it's got big shoes to fill. But this one is a good one, so you're going to enjoy that. Uh, all right. What never fails to make you laugh? Maybe go-to type of humor. <laughs> uh... It it just depends. Like I be on TikTok a lot, so it's just it's like I don't even know. It's like a little bit of the dark humor sometimes. Like, it, or it it's just like you'll see some crazy stuff on TikTok, and it's just like, dog, I'm not supposed to laugh. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. They oh. put it on there, and I got to laugh. So it's it's sometimes that, or um, what is it? It just depends. Like, I got a group message with my boys from back home, and it's never a dull moment. 